Ahoy hoy and laissez les bon temps rouler. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what the, I, I they think that was more sling blade than anything else. So it might have been. I, I, I was <laughs> gonna settle with a good laissez les bon temps rouler. Well, I didn't. I, you already said it. Uh, you cannot laissez say le, it enough. We just is it just like a Marco Polo, like a callback to each other? Laissez les bon temps rouler. Yeah, skadoosh to you bon too. Yeah. And a good skadoosh to you, sir. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode. We were patiently waiting for more information on Universal Mardi Gras 2024, and we finally have received it. We have the full concert lineup. Uh, we have the theme for this year's parade, and you know they updated on the on all of the food offerings that will be part of the event. But you know they they carry a lot of food over year after year, so I don't really expect anything with that but we're going to definitely break down the artists that will be performing we're going to be breaking down the theme of the parade this year and we're going to have a lot of fun so why don't we let the good times roll Uh, but before we do that i want to remind you this is brought to you by dreams unlimited travel if you like our content you want to support us book a vacation through dreams unlimited travel costs you no extra money and you get the support of one of the awesome dreams unlimited travel agents so head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no obligation quote and this content is also brought to you by our Patreon supporters. We truly could not make all of the content that we do without their generous support. So if you want more information on how to help us through our Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash Diz Unlimited. Okay, Rhino, where do we want to start with this? Do we want to start with the concert performers or do we want to start with the parade? I think the performers, it's the big, it's the big like shebang. I feel yeah, like, it, you know. it is the big draw. So uh, we'll get started right there. Uh, just details on it. Universal Mardi Gras, of course, will happen February 3rd through April 7th this year. And that is a daily occurrence. But the actual big name performers, that is not a daily thing. That will only be on select dates. But the parade, the food, the fun, the beads, the beads, they'll the all be beats. Bees. Beads. Beads. Yeah, that will all be part of the event daily, February 3rd through April 7th. And uh, it's definitely a rocking time. If you haven't been to Universal Mardi Gras before, uh, Universal Mardi Gras mostly takes place at Universal Studios Florida. You know, they'll say like, oh, yeah, of course, we throw some food at the different hotels on property. And yeah, you can keep the party going at Universal City Walk after the parks close uh, by heading to, you know, Pat O'Brien's or getting a drink from Fat Tuesday. Like, yeah, there's there's definitely ways to keep the party going. But in terms of the actual party itself, that's Universal Studios Florida. And the best part of it is it's all included with your park admission. You know, lower lower tier annual passes might be blocked out for the concerts. But for the most part, if you buy a ticket for that day for Universal Studios Florida, you are seeing it all. That's just that's their guarantee. Guarantee. Yeah, I guarantee. <laughs> if you buy a one day park ticket for Universal Studios Florida on one of those concert dates, you're seeing everything. I guarantee. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual concert lineup this year. Uh, Rhino, you were saying before we got started here, you're kind of disappointed that there's no like big name on the list. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's one of those. Uh, there's every year, you know, they spoiled us years ago. I feel like, uh, Twice they've gotten Kelly Clarkson. So every year I'm like, who's the Kelly Clarkson of it all? And not to say that these aren't nice. This isn't a pretty solid lineup. It's just one of those where I was like, there's not that person where I'm like, I'm going to kick the door in and do three black flips down Main Street while I go to see the concert. I've never done that either. So just so we're clear. (laughs) We could sit here and argue for hours and hours who the biggest name is that Universal has ever gotten for the event. I I mean, it's it's all just so subjective. So like when you say Kelly Clarkson kind of spoiled you like for me, no, that was that was never (laughs) a big name draw for me as much as I accept the fact that she is a hugely talented and very popular singer. It just never felt like the times that she was coming to Universal. She was like at the the height of of her career. And I know you'll argue with me on that. Uh, You'd also argue with me with Adam Lambert too, but that's, that's just your musical taste. Like for me, I feel like one of the biggest gets they ever got was years and years and years, like back in 2013 when they had uh, 30 seconds to Mars right before Jared Leto got like super weird. And it was like right after the, the Kings and Queens song. 
So I have, you we know, don't even it, know a like, single song. Probably, oh, you you would know it if you you heard it. So, uh, but you know, again, music is subjective. So someone. Uh, You know, on this list, you might be screaming at us like, how are you not making a bigger deal about them? And, you know, that's that's uh, that's fine. We we might be wrong. That's fine. We might be. I have literally I knew every name on this list except for one person. So I was like, oh, okay. I knew I would say about two thirds of the list. And I did some research on the ones that I did. He had never heard of the Casey and the Sunshine Band. Never. heard. Yeah. Let's start with the first concert, which is actually, uh, you know, on the very first night of the event, February 3rd, Walker Hayes. And this is an artist who falls into the country genre. Uh, I listened to his most popular song, Fancy Like, and uh, I had never heard it before. Rhino, once I talked to him about the song, he, he seemed to understand what it was it was definitely not my taste it was like and i listened to a couple of his songs but he's like it feels like he is a a a full-fledged country singer but also kind of wants to be a rapper at the same time so i'm like this is not for me but i guess for people who like applebee's that that song was (laughs) uh, a big thing and uh he seems to be popular like a million Instagram subscribers, but only like 670,000 YouTube subscribers. So uh, a little bit on the low side from what I expected. I'm like, there's there's people who are vloggers in the Disney community who have more subscribers than than a person who's on the radio, which sometimes it's like, wow, wild. But yeah. I digress. So Walker Hayes, will you be there, Rhino? I will. Well, probably because I think it's the first <laughs> night of the event. So yes. yeah, I, I, not because I wanted to be. <laughs> I no was, I, yeah, I know. I, I was trying to catch you in that. I was like, if you were like, no, I probably won't be there for him. I was going to say, psych, you will be. I already Guess said what? it is. It's the first night. <laughs> it's our job. Uh, then a week <laughs> later on February 10th, we have, Ryan, I'll keep you my dirty little secret because we've got the all American reject swing, swing, baby. Oh, I'll be swing, swinging over there to watch them. What was their other, what was their first song? Um, well, swing, swing. Was I thought it, was the was the first. Was big it dirty one that little I secret? Knew. No, dirty little secrets from the second album. The, okay, for, that's for, what swing, swing is the, the first one. Dirty little secret was the second, and then that that had like it all ends tonight and um, move along. Move yeah. along is from dirty little secret. It's from that same album. Move along, move because that's the one where he's like standing still. Oh, and he I, keeps changing I, outfits and everything's moving around him, but his yeah. like face stays in the center of the frame. And then we forgot about Gives You Hell. That's also, but that That's was from even that same later album. than that. No, that one was. No. So it's same saying album. Move Along and Dirty Little Secret were 2005. And then Gives You Hell was 2008. Swing oh, Swing was yes, 2002. You're right, you're right. And then last song. Isn't that, this is the last song. I, I you know, it's, a, it's a trip back in. I was never a huge fan of All American Rejects, so I'm. I know they're big, big songs, and that's about it. Um, yeah, that's it, it's kind of the same thing for me. Like I remember, like I do have "Swing Swing" is in one of my like, it, it's like in a playlist that I have that plays all the time. And the same with uh, "Move Along." Those are my two favorite songs by them. And then they're one of those bands where every now and then I'd be like, "Is this Jimmy Eat World?" <laughs> it's not Jimmy yeah. Eat World, but uh, you know, yeah, no, same I, idea I, where I was like, I like two Jimmy Eat World songs too, you know. But I did, I did have, I did have the Move Along album though, because I did yeah. listen to that um, when that had come out. But that's when I was working at Borders, so you were listening yeah. to a lot of music. No, they, they, they were just like a bunch of those other bands in that very particular time where they're like, they were still on the edge of that alternative as yeah. things were starting to get more dashboard pop punk, confessional. But before like emo and screamo, it was like a real, it was just like thread in the needle on there. Yeah, kind of, I mean, well, Huba Stank was, there was something else. And I'm glad we don't have to talk about Huba today. But we <laughs> are going to talk about uh, February 17th, Ryan. Uh, you going to be an X and O for this artist? Hmm? I, I, I mean, I, I think I only know that one song by L, uh, um, by L King. Uh, L King, but, um, you think her, her you think daddy's going to be there? I, I don't um, think her dad will be there, unfortunately, unless he happens to be playing at like the hard rock that night. They're kind of, I have actually a, been at a party with him before. So, um, I've been on a plane yeah, with him was, before. <laughs> My senior year of college, um, we were promoting a film for school and at the the rap party that was in Winter Park, we like turned around and he was there. And I think it was L King that was with him. So um, but uh Wait, what I do year love was that? Two thousand fourteen. 
Okay, so that was probably so he was in that. Was, X's and we're R talking about just come out. Uh, yeah, it would have been right around then. We're talking, of course, about Rob Schneider. That's L King's father. L King is the person yeah. that's performing at Universal. Uh, I rode on a plane with other members of the Diz team back in 2014 with Rob Schneider because he was doing a TV show that I believe was shooting at Full Sail for like a year or two oh years my God. in there. So that's I right. I bet it was the same time. Yeah, we probably right were, saw him yeah. at the same the same thing. Yeah. February 18th, finally we can get to it. KC in the Sunshine Band. That will be the nights that you see uh I don't want to I don't want to say most of the older audience coming out for it, but there's always I'll usually one performer every year that's like that's where you know it's going to be the uh some of the more uh Old, old, of the aunts old and uncles. timers out there. Yeah, they're yeah. they're going to be coming yeah. out for Casey and the Sunshine Band. I have a feeling. Yeah. If my aunt and uncle were in town, I guarantee you they'd be there. They, yeah. that, that's like one of those where I'd be, and it'd be a great time. Yeah. And the next performer on February twenty fourth, I feel like, is now uh, on. I don't know what year of their residency at Universal Mardi Gras. Maybe they have skipped a couple years here and there, but it feels like they're here every year, and people will line up to see them because they want to see what's happening behind those doors. I'm talking about the bare naked ladies. They see that sign yeah. and they're like, "Bare naked ladies," and they're like, "You can see us under." You're like, "Under where?" Oh, um, but no, I, I, I feel like they're a staple of the event at this point. They've been yeah. here so many years, but here's the thing. They're great. They're great lives. So if yeah. you haven't seen them, I think it's worth, worth going to. Yeah. You know what? It's, they've it been around for years. Like it, sometimes it feels like it's only been one week and, uh, yeah. actually they all started with the big bang. So I mean, good stuff. Yeah. I can't sorry. think of another Don't song yeah. sorry, now. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We'll just, we'll, we'll I mean, keep if I had a million along. dollars, I probably could, but I don't. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> In that case, just like the all American rejects, we'll just move along. Uh, okay. On March 2nd, you know, my birthday's March 3rd. I will not be celebrating on March 2nd. We have DJ Khaled. He's going to say his name a bunch of times. I, I believe that's what he's known for. Correct. He was also um, in pitch perfect three. Is he not? Maybe I, does he make an appearance in one of the Spider-Man movies? Maybe I don't know. I Is could he, be in. He says here. another one all the time, right? Another one. What are you, are you talking? Like how Pitbull always says, "Mr. Worldwide." Kind of. Yes, I believe DJ Khaled is always like another one, and then he says I'm, his name. I, I know what he looks like. He's definitely in a Spider-Man movie. Um, I, I think he's in one of the Tom Holland ones, but I don't know. It's one of those people where like our friend Ashley loved loves him and like i don't i don't it's one of those songs where i never know it's actually him you know when yeah. you're listening to it well i just looked it up and there's well, videos of him New just Orleans. saying another one for 30 seconds straight so i do believe he is the another oh, okay. one uh i it's one of those things i'm sure i've heard his songs before i know him more from like being on movies and tv but yeah i know i can i i you know, I will not be there for it, nor will I be there on March 9th for Ava Max, who uh, I looked up, still had no idea. And then Rhino had to give me a, a lowdown on Ava Max. What's her big stuff? Yeah, um, it's the all of the kings and it's the kings and queens song. It's in one of my running playlists because uh, and then um, I feel like her other the other big one for me that I'm like, I know her from is that. Oh, she's sweet, but a psycho, a little bit psycho. Uh, yes. so, yep, yep. Ma, 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 ma. Yeah, I mean, which I also enjoy that song as yeah. well. I, I know she's got way more than that because, like, you brought up, she has that song on the Barbie soundtrack too. That I was like, yeah, you're, like I remembered it as soon as you said it, and um, I know she's got more music that I would recognize. It's just one of those yeah. where it's like, I, all the gays love her. That's what I'm gonna say. I know that the gays love her. I was gonna say, I think this is gonna be actually one of the more popular nights. Like right when they made the announcement, I was looking on the pass holder Facebook group for Universal and a lot of people were pointing out Ava Max. So I think it's gonna be a, a very busy night that night. Uh then on the following night, March tenth, uh an actress that has been acting so long that I forgot that she started off as a singer. Which, you know, that, yeah. that sometimes happens. I mean, like, I, because I feel like she hasn't gone back to singing a lot, kind of like JLo, where every now and then when you're like, yeah, JLo's an actor, actress, uh, then she starts singing again. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. She, you know, it's, she's been all over the place with it. But March 10th, Queen Latifah. So I want to go just to say that I've I saw seen Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah yeah. like live and in person. I, you know, I, 
grew up, I feel like, on the later side of when she was singing. So I don't really know any of her music. I probably know a couple songs like that were playing on the radio or on MTV back in the day. But yeah, I, as a performer, I don't care about it. But I want to say I saw Queen Latifah. I mean, I love her Is movies. Is Queen Latifah not Oscar nominated Queen Latifah? Am I crazy? Did, mm-hmm. did she? What would maybe, she have been nominated not. for? I don't know. She's been I, in a, a Chicago. <coughs> I don't think so. I, you I don't think she'll think she... do? You think she'll do the? If you're good to mama, mama's good to. She's got it right. I don't know. I feel like that might bring down the entire vibe. I just looked it up. Um, she uh, so Queen Latifah has. Uh, she's won some awards. She, you you are right. Best Supporting Actress for Chicago in 2002. Was it Chicago? She was okay. nominated. Oh, Did not win, yeah. but nominated no, for I, it. I and she, she, won. she has won a Golden Globe, two Screen Actor Guild Awards, two Image Awards, a Grammy Award, and six additional Grammy nominations, an Emmy Award nomination, and her Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Gosh. for Chicago. So I uh, tip the hat I'm not wearing to you, good sir, for knowing that uh, information about Queen Latifah. I love and Queen Latifah. Yeah, I, I'm a. We used to watch Living Single all the time too. So that's why it's like I I very much enjoy. I, I feel like Queen Latifah is like one of those people that's been very present my entire life. If that that makes sense, you know how sometimes it's just an actor that's always you know bopping along as yeah. you're going along, and and that was it's like I remember being very young and watching Living Single, and then like and then she was in like movies like like um yeah. what's that one she was in with Steve Martin and Eugene Levy. Um, bringing like, down the house. No, yeah, that was and, or was um, that with Tommy Lee Jones? No, that was. No, that was Steve Martin because because okay. it, it's the one where uh, it's the one you got me straight tripping, boo. Um, <laughs> uh, I had a I used to have yeah, a button because they like yeah. gave it to me at the movie where it was Eugene Levy and on it it said you got me straight tripping, boo. Um, but yeah, I, I Queen Latifah is one of those people where it's like I don't know, I just she just got an energy where you're like I want to be around it, so like we got to oh, go yeah. no matter what. Yeah, no, and uh, you know, like the last holiday. That's also a great. She just, oh, yeah. she was in a string of great the movies collector. in the two thousands. So uh, always, always love Queen Latifah. Uh, on March sixteenth, uh, Louis Fonsi, who uh, is a Puerto Rican performer that I also think will be very, very popular. Uh, Despacito. Rhino knows more of his songs than I do, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I do, but. Uh, uh, I think he's been here once before, maybe twice. And uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's going to be very, very popular. No, it's good. I and I'm glad. I'm happy that they. I feel like uh, it, they diversify the lineup. I feel like, which is nice. So <laughs> it's it's well, it's like uh, it's I don't I don't know because Louis Fonzi's most of his music is in Spanish, and it's the same with like when Becky G was here. Most of her music was yeah. in Spanish. So it's like it's nice. This is a little bit, a little bit of everything. Yeah. And I want to say my chuckle for, uh, you know, diversifying the music comes with March 17th, the final concert, Zed, who I looked up is a German DJ. So (laughs) to go from one night to have a Puerto Rican performer to a German DJ the following night. It's a pretty bold move, Cotton. But uh, we've oh. got we've got the Canadian bare naked ladies. It all balances everything out. <laughs> no, we do. Yeah, this it is a pretty radical list. It is all over the place. Uh, the main thing I'll say is, even if it's a performer that you don't think you'll enjoy, it's a free concert on those nights. Stop, yeah. listen to a song or two. If it's not your thing, move on. But I mean, it is you still know- so huge that in this day and age, that Universal still puts on. They, I say free concerts. Granted, it's all included in your admission and everything that you pay for. But uh, they they don't have to go all out and do this. And I mean, it's just the it's Z- nice to have. The Zed one is interesting because Zed is a DJ. Zed doesn't sing in it, I don't think, at all. So it's like um, – uh, and I understand the irony of we said Zed repeatedly while I'm wearing this Power Rangers shirt. But I, I am um, – I, I – I have not gone to see a concert. I know that Universal has had DJs before, yeah. but I've never seen like a DJ perform. I, it's one of those things where I was like, it feels weird to me. Not weird to me. I just, I don't think I comprehend it. So it's one of those where I'm like, I'm curious. I think I'm going to go just for that. Yep. I mean, the only DJ I've ever seen perform was DJ Tanner on an episode of Full House. And she did oh. not do great. So 
Oh. She was not talented in the musical arts. But that's your concert lineup. And uh, if you want more information, of course, you can always go to uofan.com or Universal Orlando's app. We'll have all the information you need about those concerts. And as we always recommend, uh, if you really want to see these performers up close, get there as early as possible. Uh, some people say, you know, get there first thing in the day and camp out the entire day. That's extreme. I mean, you might have to do it to get that very front row, but you know, you can still go later in the day the and view. have yeah, no, and it's definitely not the best for sound. So go go later in the day, get get a nice spot. Just realize that you might not be able to have like a prime spot for the concert as well as the parade. You you might have to sacrifice one for the other. So if you're attending multiple nights on the concert night, if it's someone you really care about, you know wait and get a good spot and you'll kind of see the parade from afar and then the next day see the parade in the big way so but uh it's it's definitely a cool part of universal mardi gras but i've mentioned the parade now multiple times so let's talk about the parade uh it runs through the streets of universal studios florida every year there will be people throwing beads from the floats. So uh, the Universal Annual Pass holder sign up sold out like instantly, uh, but they will have like a virtual queue that you can sign up in the park when their space is open. You might be able to ride and throw beads on those days. Uh, they also have the the bead dine package where basically you, your meal is what it would cost to have a meal anyways and then you also reserve a, a spot on one of the floats uh, so that's also an option if that's how you want to want to do it it is very unique getting to ride on those floats it's a complete different perspective of the parade um, but you know you also can't catch the beads then so decide how you want to handle it if you want to try to get on a float definitely recommend but I also think it's very enjoyable just watching this parade from the ground uh, the parade's made up of 12 floats plus performers on the ground. Uh, six of the floats are uh, just like inspired by New Orleans and Mardi Gras in general. You know, you have the Gator float, you have the King and Queen float, uh, it, it, all of the classic floats, the Preservation Hall Band float. Uh, they're all there. They're there every single year and it is a staple, but then they change the theme out every year. And this year, the theme of the parade is the elements ryan i know you're a big fan of captain america so what are the elements i think you mean captain planet captain planet that's who i'm thinking <laughs> okay, of okay captain I'm planet like, he's our hero <laughs> captain planet yeah thank brings you pollution down to who's zero. captain america um, never heard of him um okay. the <laughs> uh you've got earth wind fire heart no they're not playing water. this year they're not water. playing this year yeah they're not they didn't they're get them this part. year but they have yeah. played yeah they, they wanted to get them but they couldn't so they already had the elements uh what was your list again for captain planet <laughs> earth fire wind water heart by your powers combined well i am captain planet not not the heart in here i hate that uh the six hey, elements hey, they monkey, are leave them alone that, well <laughs> fantastic the six elements represented this year earth wind fire water and then these aren't elements, but they're throwing them in anyways. The sun and the moon. And that's our unique parade floats this year. And i uh, going to give you a sneak peek look at the floats. So this is a look at, if you're watching this, this is a look Ooh. at the fire float uh, for the event to kind of give you an idea. Um, uh, you know, these floats are massive. They are built in New Orleans and they are just... Uh, you know they're 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 the real deal in that way and uh in terms of the float you know it's going to have a nice big volcano on the end of the back that will you know hopefully be erupting with fire and fun i'm like maybe not real mm. fire yeah i want to see real fire there's got to be fire shooting out of this float like I there hope just so. has to be there has to be but at the front uh there's this really creepy giant head with like this He's beast like with horns and a Elsa. mustache. Yeah, the, but it's like a ponytail like, braid mustache. Ponytail mustache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh really, really wild uh to see. But uh it's uh you know, these things are, are bigger than you would ever expect. Uh I was super, super happy. So the backstory on this this look at it is uh 
when I went to New Orleans with Disney on the Tiana research trip to, you know, see how Imagineers like got inspired by New Orleans and, and brought it all together at life to life. Uh, they took us to Mardi Gras world, which, you know, that was kind of our deal. We're not, we went in May, we didn't go around Mardi Gras. So how do you get the vibe of Mardi Gras without actually experiencing it? And they take you to this place called Mardi Gras world. Uh, it's the Kern studios. And that's where, you know, they build a ton of the floats for Mardi Gras and for people who have floats in a Mardi Gras parade. And it also happens to be where they build the floats for universal. So we're just walking through there and strolling and looking at them, like constructing the floats. Like they were actively working on this fire float and just had the artwork sitting just right there as you're walking past so you could see what exactly it was that they were working on. So I like I looked at it because it caught my eye right away. I'm like, that looks like a universal float. And then saw like right down in the corner of the artwork, Kern Studios by Universal Studios <coughs> Florida. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's so That's this cool. year, no idea what the overall theme of the parade's gonna be, but know that there will be a fire float involved. So yeah, it's uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that it's finally been announced because I've known now since May of 2023 that there was going to be a fire float. Just didn't know how it was, you know, how it was all going to come together in the greater scheme of things. But uh, I, I, I think it, uh, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be cool. And I almost, I was almost like, I kind of want to keep going back to Mardi Gras world every, every couple weeks to see if they're working on a new float for it. But. Uh, yeah, made made by the real deal. So very cool stuff. And Parade's great every year. I always recommend checking out different places to watch it. Just like bounce around depending on how crazy it is. I love standing. It's reversed this year. What's that? The the route is reversed this year. Thank you. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. I, I still, you know, for me, I think one of the more exciting places to watch it is right as soon as it's coming out of uh, out of its opening at Hollywood. It just feels like that's where the most energy is in terms of catching beads. It's not always the best because sometimes they're being a little bit, you know, they're holding back a little bit of the beads because they warn you, like, don't throw too much. You're not going to have any for the end. Uh, but then again, if you're at the end of the parade route, then all of a sudden they're going to be tossing beads like crazy to get rid of the ones that they didn't before. So I, I like being right at the start or the finish of the parade. But if you have to watch in like New York, it's fine. But uh, Rhino, what what's your favorite spot? Mm, on it. What? On it. On the parade. Uh, on it. On the on the actual float. Um, no, I I think I like New York. We watched it. I want to say it was like two parades ago or something. We watched it like right outside of um, uh, Louis. Like or the what's the Pete's place? Louis. Yeah. Louis, yeah, like we watched it like right where there was like a slight like where the road starts to turn a little bit. So like it kind of like I felt like we got it coming at us and then angled. And I, I don't know. I liked it over there. I like I like I like watching parades on a turn, I feel yeah. like because it's kind of like you can see them come in. But then also you so you get like a little bit more of the float than just like the flat view of it. I completely agree with you. I always enjoy being on that angle. So it kind of adds depth to the entire thing. And the parade is a great time. Just check the Universal app to make sure you know what the times are because it, it changes depending on if there's a concert that night. Uh, but finally, we're just going to mention the food really briefly because that is become such a big part of Universal Mardi Gras. Uh, and they have tasting size portions of food all around the park at different booths. You know, it's all inspired by carnival celebrations around the world. So you're going to get a lot of different food items. Uh, you can buy each item individually at the different booths. Uh, if you are a guest that wants to save a little bit of money, you can buy a $70, $75 food and beverage card for only $65. And if you're an annual or seasonal pass holder, you can purchase a $150 card for $120. So if you know you're going to mm -hmm. be eating and drinking a lot, just do the deal. Get get that extra but money. But you can Even use it after too. Yeah, exactly. So just, just buy the card. It's a smart investment. If you're going to eat, you know you're going to eat, just do it. You're right? hungry. Day hungry. Day so hungry. <laughs> uh, I don't, Rhino's not going to see these photos uh, as I'm just mentioning some of the items that they could have because uh, I didn't prepare it for our pre recording here. But uh, I'll, 
he'll see it later. But some of the example food items that they'll have uh, at Germany, they'll have chicken schnitzel. Uh, at New Orleans, they will have beignets. In Mexico, they will have chilaquiles verdes. Always a good time. At Puerto Rico, they'll have pastelones. I'm sure you know what those are, Rhino. It looks like a giant yes. lasagna. Puerto Rican lasagna. Is that a good? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good. That's... No, I like it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, they're going to have an O oh Baby beer in you've New had, Orleans. You've, you've had it before. I have, I'm, have I'm I? I'm positive you've had it before because remember Eli made that one that was made with plantains? Oh, yep. Yep. You are absolutely okay, right. Think, yeah. Yep. Nope. You are correct. So I... I stand by your knowledge of my past. <laughs> uh, Spain is going to have a sangria flight. So why not get sangria in Spain? Like I said, an O oh Baby beer draft from New Orleans. So I'm not sure who makes O oh Baby, but I'll do a quick Google search. Can you can you search who makes O oh Baby beer, New Orleans? We might be you able to it. find it. You got it, O oh Baby. baby. Uh, also at the Puerto Rico booth, pina coladas at uh, the creperie. Wait, it says crepes, but it also says France. Anyways, it's a Banana Foster's Creme Brulee crepe. So I think that's going to be on our list because we love Bananas Foster's. We love crepes. Um, just sounds like a winner. Uh, Belgium will have a Godiva and Biscoff Liege waffle. Crooked can. <laughs> Crooked can. So all the way from New Orleans Winter Garden, you have Crooked Cans, oh baby. So, I yeah. mean, they love representing Crooked Gam beers now, so I'm not going to complain. But why Why not? Uh, China is going to have a spicy smashed cucumber dish. Looks very good. Uh, Canada will have vegan wild mushroom poutine. So Rhino's going to have to mm-hmm. fight his love of poutine with his hatred of mushrooms. And yeah, they, love if of they're truffle vegan mushrooms. options. Mm. Yeah. I don't have that I'll information. Try I'll try it. I'll try uh, it. Uh, Colombia is going to have a Junior Colombian burger, uh, not to be confused, I believe, with from, the restaurant the, in Orlando. Yeah, I was a junior say, from Colombian the, burger from the street outside. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I I think they're doing a take on that, but they're not bringing them in from Juniors. Uh, <laughs> then one of the items that I'm most excited. We might have tried it before and been disappointed, but it's always going to catch my attention. A fried green tomato po' boy from New mm. Orleans. We did try it last year, and I think we were disappointed, but. I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, then in City Walk, apparently there will be some place where you can get pineapple coconut rum cake, which Ooh. Ryan loves a good rum cake. Oh, I do. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely do. So, and of course, that's just a sample of the food. There's going to be so much more at all those booths we mentioned, plus even more booths. Uh, it's it's you can't go far without finding food, and for the most part. You know, I feel like if you get the gift card, you're saving money. You feel like it's a little bit of better value because sometimes the portions or the quality just doesn't doesn't match up. But I'm happy that they do it, and I hope they never stop exploring uh, different and better food options during these mm-hmm. special events. So, Ryan, I guess the last question I have you for you, Rhino, Alligator Rhino, Crawfish Daddy Rhino, all that and above. Are you ready to let the good times roll? Hey, Universal Mardi Gras. Oh, they lay about Tom Roulet. That's what I was hoping to hear. So uh, we will be there when it all kicks off on February 3rd, again, through April 7th at Universal Studios Florida in the Universal Orlando Resort. We hope you go out and check it out. Let those good times roll. Hear some good music. Have some good food. See a parade. Just take it all in. But for now, that's going to do it for this week's episode of our Universal show. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and you want to support us more, Book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free, no obligation quote today for your universal vacation at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Support us through Patreon at patreon.com slash disunlimited. If you are watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, leave comments, questions, video suggestions in the comment section. And if you were listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating and review when possible. Uh, Rhino, thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. Oh, you're welcome. No, oh, thank you. And thank you, everyone out there, for taking the time to listen and watch. Uh, it really means the world to us. And thank you so much for your support. But we will have to say goodbye for now and see you again on another 
episode of the Diz Unlimited Universal Show. Laissez les bon temps rouler, and remember, we finally changed that name. <laughs>